from the Weather NorCal Command Center, this is your evening update. American Door Company has been family owned and operated for over 29 years, supplying Northern California with quality garage doors, garage door openers, and installed with the best service you'd expect from a locally owned company. We serve all of Northern California from Willows all the way up to the Oregon State Line. Give us a call today. Good evening, everyone. We've got a lot to talk about in our deep dive forecast, but before we get to that, here is your quick Kruger's quick cast. Quick Kruger's Quick Cast. We'll just call it Kruger's Quick Cast at that. Of course, that's for today. So let's show you what we can expect here as we go through the night and into tomorrow. Another chilly start to the day. I, I think some of us could drop down to the upper 50s in the valley, 40s for the higher elevations and those mid 50s for the coast. As you head out the door tomorrow morning for your August 22nd, yeah, we're going to start to see a few clouds roll in in some areas, especially around the coast, but still mainly dry at this point. Temperatures in the low 60s for uh, the valley by 8 a.m. and low to mid 50s for the coast, and not to mention the higher elevations. One of the things that I'm watching here is a flash flood watch that's issued basically for the burn scar area of the park fire. Now, I don't anticipate there to be as much rainfall in this area as there will be to the north and west of the fire, but there just, I mean, if, it, if that storm just shifts a little bit more to the south, then we've got a bit of a problem. So this is something that bears watching, but at this point, I'm not terribly concerned about it. And I'll show you why here in a second. But first, here's a look at the severe outlook for tomorrow. The National Weather Service has actually taken out the, even a chance for any rain here to the north, at least thunderstorms, to the north and west here. So really not even much activity going into tomorrow, which we'll see here on Futurecast. Here's 8 a.m., maybe a few sprinkles, light showers along the coast, otherwise the cloud cover, mainly dry for everywhere else. We take you into the afternoon hours, about 3 p.m., 5 p.m., we're seeing some showers developing. But notice, this is the latest forecast model data coming in. It's backing off on the overall intensity of these thunderstorms. So yeah, we're seeing some activity here for central Siskiyou County, maybe a light shower around Redding, but that's really the extent of it. It's not until we go into, say, tomorrow night, right, that we may, may see some stronger thunderstorms, but even then, it's not very widespread and we're not just seeing much activity in many cases here. Now again, be sure to stick around a little bit longer because we're gonna have the next couple of days coming in after that. So here's your forecast for tomorrow. We got mainly dry conditions. We could see some thunderstorms here for parts of Siskiyou County, especially late in the day, but dry to the east. There could be a few showers here and there for parts of the coast in Trinity County, but overall, not a lot of activity as you saw there on Futurecast. So let's take a look at your seven day outlook. I think the main event will be on Friday. And that Friday event will mainly be in the form of showers and heavy rainfall, maybe some thunderstorms in many areas as well. So that's Friday. And then the storm system will be exiting the area on Saturday. So some uh, chances for some morning showers on Saturday, diminishing through the day on Saturday. Then on Sunday, we start to dry things out entirely and we warm back up to where we should be for this time of the year by the beginning of next week. Taking a look at the coast, yeah, I've got a chance in there for the coast, inland, and uh, parts of Trinity County, but don't count on much, if anything. It's Friday, that'll be the main event. And then Saturday, again, kind of exiting the region, not expecting to see as much activity at that point. For Mount Shasta, I've included a chance for storms late in the day tomorrow, better chances on Friday, maybe some lingering showers Saturday morning. El Turris, I've got a chance in there for you tomorrow, but mainly dry. It's sat Friday and even Saturday, we could see a chance for some showers and storms. And then of course for Susanville, Eastern Mountains, yeah, you've got dry conditions. I don't anticipate anything tomorrow. It's not until tomorrow night into Friday that we'll see the main event come in and maybe some more storms, especially for Saturday morning on Saturday. All right, that is your quick out the door forecast. Of course, it took a while because there is some to talk about, but now let's go into much deeper. Before we get to that, I do want to remind you, as the storms are moving through, you can track them right from your phone. Now, I know there are all kinds of apps out there, but this is the Weather NorCal app. Great radar product. And on top of that, you can watch my latest forecast on it. You can watch the 24-hour channel. You can watch all the special programming. You can see the seven-day forecast, the daily planners, the current temperatures. A lot of great information. And the beautiful part of it is it's right here. It's local. Now, it will follow you if we put it on geolocation. So if you go to, say, Alabama, for example, it will tell you that there are thunderstorm warnings there if there are. So kind of an interesting and great app, but uh, very much localized for our area. All right, so here's your weather headlines. 
The highs will stay below normal for the rest of the week. Cooler with rain and thunderstorms later this week. Now that's mainly going to be on Friday. On either end of that, we'll see. And again, we'll take a closer look at future casts here in a second. Snow, that's right. Snow with the storm system as low as 7,000 feet. But after the storm passes, it's warming back up, back to normal for this time of the year. And that's upper 90s to even around 100 degrees. So the winds, they weren't a factor today. But notice as the storm system approaches, especially for the valley eastward, we've got some pretty gusty winds out there. Strong enough that we have some fire advisories here, fire uh, uh, concerns for Modoc County and Eastern Lassen County for Thursday. Not to mention even going into Friday because the winds will be fairly strong again. In fact, let's take a look at Friday's winds. And you can see they died down for Friday morning, but as the storm system passes through, look at the winds. Now, a lot of these are coming in from thunderstorms. So as the thunderstorms develop, you see the gusty winds. But overall, we're looking at some gusty winds really across the board. Look at the coast. I mean, over 30 miles per hour there, close to 30 miles per hour for parts of the valley, and over 25 miles per hour off in the eastern mountains. So what are our humidity levels going to do? Well, with the approaching storm system, the cooler temperatures will also help to increase our humidity, not to mention the fact that there will be some moisture associated with this storm. So look at these humidity levels, 42% in Reading tomorrow. That's unheard of. We're typically in the, the, the teens, 20% range. Uh, you can see a little bit drier though as you head off to the east here. As we take you into your Friday as the main storm system is passing through once again, some very good relative humidity levels. So that's good to see from the standpoint of the fires, not so great to see as we could be looking at some thunderstorms and some of them could be severe. So here's what I'm tracking with the approaching storm system. Scattered showers and thunderstorms are expected. Some places are gonna be better than others. I'd say the north end of the valley, northward into, into Siskiyou County, westward into Trinity County, Del Norte and Humboldt counties, those will be the best chances for thunderstorms. Modoc County, Eastern Mountains, you could see some activity, but not as much. We're also talking gusty winds, not just from the thunderstorms, but just from the storm system itself. That's for tomorrow, and that's for Friday. The winds should start to die down by Saturday. Periods of heavy rainfall, hail, and lightning are a very good possibility at these storms as they come on through. And snow down to as low as 7,000 feet. I think once the storm system passes, we may be able to look out in the mountains and see some snow-capped mountains over some of those highest elevations, mainly above 7,000 feet. Should be an interesting sight. Interesting sight for August, to say the least. Of course, it'll melt very quickly. All right, so here's another thing, and I mentioned this earlier, and we're gonna talk about it again. The National Weather Service has issued a flash flood watch for the areas in green. Now, this is mainly for the burn scar area of the park fire. Mudslides, debris flows are a concern and not to mention just some flash flooding in general. So even outside of the burn scar area, I think we could see the potential for some flash flooding due to that heavy rainfall. You think about what we saw on Saturday, downtown Reading saw some, uh, some localized flash flooding, and then of course it quickly uh, you know, dropped and we didn't have to, it wasn't that much of a problem. So we could be looking at some more flash flooding, especially for the north end of the valley. But things could get interesting, I think, as you head off into this area here. We may hear about some more flash flood warnings and advisories there too. Severe outlook for tomorrow. National Weather Service has taken every chance out for at least any strong thunderstorms for us tomorrow. And I agree with that. I don't think we're going to see much. But by Friday, I think this is a good representation of where most of the storms will be. I think they'll mainly be really pinpointed in this area right here. And then kind of on the outside of that, it gets less. Now we'll take a look at future casts and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right. So. Here we go. Of course, I put the burn scars in there, by the way, so you have a, a point of reference as the rain is passing through. So, tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., not much going on. We got a few clouds out there, especially along the coast, a few showers and sprinkles developing. All right, now we take you into Thursday afternoon. Here's two o'clock, not much going on. You got the clouds in advance of the storm system moving in, but really, even for the valley, you're not seeing much in the way of a cloud cover even, and of course, to the east of that as well. So still, early afternoon, not much going on. There may be a few sprinkles developing at this point, but by the time we get into the mid to late afternoon, really later afternoon hours, central Siskiyou County, but even the north end of the valley, looks like around Redding, city of Shasta Lake, all of this area here could see a chance for a stray thunderstorm or a shower. 
and maybe even as far south as Red Bluff. As you start heading southward, probably dry conditions all day long for your Thursday. And then you head to the west of that, look at this, not very active at all. Maybe a stray sprinkle, maybe a light shower, that's it. Then you head to the east, look at Modoc County, look at Lassen, Plumas County. All cloud free for the most part, maybe a few high clouds. That's it. So really overall, yeah, I put the chance for showers in there for Modoc County, but don't count on it. I don't think it's gonna happen. Now, as we go into Thursday night, we may see some more redevelopment here in eastern uh, Siskiyou County for some heavy rainfall, gusty winds, thunderstorms, right? But to the south of that, it's dry and everywhere else looking fairly dry as well. Now things get more interesting as we go into Friday. All right, so here's midnight, Thursday night into early Friday morning. Still some leftover activity here for parts of central Siskiyou County. But look it up here. So we've got this big, broad area of low pressure spinning. In that flow is this disturbance right here. That is gonna swing down into Northern California by Friday morning. Now, 8 a.m. Friday morning, it's just beginning to hit the coast. Elsewhere, we're just not seeing much activity. Yes, a few stray sprinkles, a few light showers here and there, but nothing intense. So here we are, Friday morning, nothing major has happened yet, okay, for most of us. Again, parts of Siskiyou County, maybe some stronger thunderstorms for Thursday night. But then we go into the noon hour on Friday. Now you look at Northern Humboldt, Del Norte, Western Siskiyou County. Within that flow of that low pressure system, again, this is all kind of moving in this direction. Within that flow, we're seeing that heavy rainfall making its way to the Northwestern portions of the state. Now we're just getting some of that rain out towards the Boise fire, but nothing as of yet for the park fire. All right, so remember, there is a flash flood watch for this area, all right? So let's take you into Friday, 4 p.m. We're getting in the second half of the day on Friday, by the way, now, okay? And we're still not seeing much activity for a lot of us. So you head to the Northwest, Western Siskiyou County, Del Norte, and a good portion of Humboldt County and Northern Trinity County, getting some good, heavy rain. And there is the Boise fire getting some heavy rainfall. There's gonna be embedded thunderstorms in here, but I honestly think we could see the potential for some flooding in these areas here with the heavy rainfall. It's a parched ground and yes, it's thirsty and it's gonna, but as you get the heavy rainfall coming down, it takes a while sometimes for that ground to get saturated and we can get some, uh, some good runoff. All right, so you can see by 4 p.m., maybe a shower around the Reading area. Then we go into 6 p.m., you see where most of the rain is off to the north and west, but now we're beginning to see a little bit of rainfall over the park fire. But you can see it's not terribly heavy, but certainly a welcome sight nonetheless. And then we can see a straight shower thunderstorm around Bernie, not to mention um, parts of eastern Siskiyou County. But look at Modoc County, Lassen County. Still not a lot going on here, but maybe a chance for a straight shower or maybe even a thunderstorm developing there as well. All right, we take you into Friday night, 11 p.m. That flow is kind of, we still have that flow kind of moving in this direction, right? So now it's pretty much all of Siskiyou County, good portion of Shasta County, including the valley, it heads southward into Corning, showers there, maybe some thunderstorms. That's of course making its way into the park fire, the burn scar area there. But you head to the south, Chico, Willows, Oroville. Yeah, I think you'll see a chance for showers, but it doesn't look to be all that heavy. There's that heavier rainfall right here. Now we're seeing more of that rain making its way into parts of, um, Modoc County and into Lassen County as well. Now, this is as far out as this forecast model goes. What's gonna happen is, we're not necessarily gonna see it move to the south, but this will all just shift to the east. So there will be a point in time, Friday night into Saturday morning, we'll see some decent rain coming into uh, parts of Modoc County and northern portions of Lassen County. And of course, I think even into Friday night early Saturday morning, some of that making its way to the northern end of the valley around Redding and Red Bluff in the form of thunderstorms. Now, this is the point in time, late Friday night, early Saturday morning, where if this could bring enough heavy rainfall over the park fire, you're talking about the potential for mudslides and debris flows. That is the time frame that I would be most concerned, is late Friday night, early Saturday morning for the park fire. All right, so that's something we're gonna have to keep our eyes on. All right, so let's uh, now take a look at uh, the rainfall totals. Now this is still looking at the long range forecast model. I'm gonna wait until we have all of the time frame for the shorter range model. 
But what this will help to illustrate, and it's doing a better job now, it is showing that the bulk of the rainfall is going to be kind of in this area here, not to mention off to the east. I think it might be overdoing it for places like Chester, but in really a lot of these places. Don't take any of these numbers to be literal as the amount of rainfall that you're going to see. But what this is going to illustrate is that there are some areas that could see close to a tenth of an inch of rainfall, maybe a few hundredths, and other areas may get close to a three quarters to maybe even an inch of rainfall. That is a lot of rain no matter where you are for the month of August. So it should be interesting to see how much rain we end up with this, but we'll kind of have to wait and see. So here's Saturday morning, 6 a.m. Now we're looking at the long range forecast model, not the most uh, accurate representation. We go into the noon hour, you see how it's starting to kind of move on out. However, you look at the European forecast model, it's still fairly aggressive that some of the activity may still be there around the noon hour. But through the afternoon, that all pretty much dissipates, it moves on out, it's dry for Sunday, and it's dry most likely through all of next week. High pressure will start to build in and it gets a lot warmer, all right? So let's take a look at the big picture. We're starting off with fall-like temperatures, then back to summer. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is the cooler air. It's diving to the south. Wind's picking up tomorrow. Wind's very strong again on Friday with this area of low pressure right here. This is a tightly wound area of low pressure. You see this right here? You see how tightly packed these lines are? That's showing that it's a fairly strong area of low pressure. And that's when we can start to see some very strong winds. Now, one of the things I was talking about is the flow around that area of low pressure is the direction that the rain is going to be moving. So as we go into Friday afternoon, Friday evening, watch what happens with this low pressure. It actually moves more to the north and east than it does to the south and east. That's important to take note, all right? Because if this were to take more of a southeasterly flow, you can bet we'd be looking at a lot more rain over the Park Fire, Chico, for example. But as this pushes to the north and east, it's going to bring that rain to the, to the north as well. And we see less rain for some of these southern portions of our viewing area, like Chico, for example. All right, so by the time we get into Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, that low pressure system, it's now long gone. It's moved on out of here. We go into Sunday and we've got this high pressure system beginning to build in. Temperatures are on the increase. We go into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week. Look what's happening. High pressure is building in. Now, it's not directly over us, so I don't expect a major heat wave, but I do expect upper 90s to about 100 degrees here through a good portion of next week. The Climate Prediction Center has us within that warmer than normal category. And when we look at the 10-day trend for Reading, there it is. Big dip, then right back up as we go into Monday through next week. Kind of interesting, right? I mean, a lot to talk about the approaching storm system, but once that's gone, <laughs> things are back to normal around here. There's a look at your Thursday wave heights, right? They're starting to increase here with the approaching storm system, and they'll begin to increase even more going into your Friday. So here's a marine forecast for your Thursday. West winds at 5 knots, waves from the northwest at 2 feet at 11 seconds, and of course that chance for rain, but no small correct advisories at this point. For tonight, yeah, we saw this a little bit earlier, upper 50s to around 60 in the valley. For the mountains in the 40s, mid 50s out along the coast. Not a bad start to your day, right? So here's your Trinity County neighborhood forecast. Temperatures are starting to drop now, right? The, the, the area of low pressure is moving closer. It's not over as yet, but it's moving closer and temperatures are dropping. I think we'll struggle to get out of the 70s for many of us for uh, Trinity County. For the North Coast, there you have it, 65 degrees for Blue Lake, 73 for Garberville. I'm not going to go into the timing of the rain because we went over that in, in future cast. But you get the idea here. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday of the three main days with Friday really being that main day in there. Gas key about 68, 71 for Orleans, 73 degrees in Hoopa. Here's your Siskiyou County neighborhood forecast. Temperatures mainly in the 70s, 77 degrees for Wairika tomorrow. Weed about 73 and Tennant, a high of about 69 degrees. Here's your Modoc County neighborhood forecast with 73 for Tule Lake, 81 in Fort Bidwell and 80 in a high of about 75 degrees. And your Eastern Mountains neighborhood forecast, not a lot of 80s in there are there. In fact, the only 80 I see is Susanville at 80, 81 for Doyle. Uh, you can see out towards Shingletown about 73 and Paradise 76. So we're already starting that cooling trend for tomorrow. And you'll see that in the valley too. Low to mid 80s, 
Very nice. But look at the winds they're picking up from the south southeast. 84 degrees out for Oroville, 84 degrees for Willows, and 83 degrees in Corning. Up north, uh, we'll call mid 80s, 85 for Reading, 81 degrees for Whiskey Town. Lake Hit a high of about 84 degrees. Here's a look at your seven day outlook for Reading. So, again, don't count on much tomorrow, if anything. If you see anything in Reading or Red Bluff, it will be late in the day, like late afternoon, early evening, maybe a stray shower, off chance for a thunderstorm. Friday, I think that's the best chance for some rain, but late in the day again. It's, it's like late afternoon, Friday night, that we'll see some of that heavier rainfall coming in. Thunderstorms, the works. Maybe a chance for some morning showers Saturday, but then Saturday afternoon, it should be dry. Dry and warmer, and of course, back to normal around here by Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. That is your evening update. We'll have the latest on this approaching storm system, better understanding of the timing of when the rain will move through. Uh, that will be for your 6 o'clock in the morning update, and of course, on Coffee with Kruger starting at 7 a.m. We'll see you then. At Cottonwood Small Animal Clinic and Cottonwood Veterinary Clinic, we're here to provide the best possible care for your patients. We understand that your pet is your family member, and when your family member is sick, they need urgent help. All our staff is so passionate about the care that goes into all your little creatures. Making relationships with pet parents here in Cottonwood is the greatest feeling in the world. Come find us off the Gas Point exit here in the heart of Cottonwood.